Good morning, everyone. This is Dina Ramirez. I will be hosting today's webinar session. I just wanted to uh, say hello here and uh, also check to see if everyone can see my audio and video at this point in time. If I could get a few messages in the chat window, that's all I need to confirm that my audio and my visual is working. Okay, wonderful. It looks like I am getting a few confirmations and it looks like my audio is good to go. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us here today. Good morning to a good majority of you, but I know that it may be afternoon or maybe uh, evening in other parts of the world. I do see that we have people from all over the world here. Uh, we have people from Mexico, Netherlands, I saw, um, UK. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, for joining and taking the time to learn a little bit more about the Easily Designer and how you can create your very first infographic. Now, we're going to go ahead and get started, but I do want to uh, touch on a few uh, housekeeping items regarding the Crowdcast platforms in case you've never uh, joined Crowdcast and used this platform before. So on the right-hand side, you'll see that there is a chat window. Feel free to go ahead and post any comments in that area. Area. I do have a colleague here with me today. Uh, her name is Latasha, and she will be monitoring the chat window for me since we often get quite a few people here, and it's a little hard to uh, take a look at that and also uh, guide this webinar. So thank you, thank you, Latasha, for joining us this, this morning and uh, guiding and uh, monitoring that chat window for all of our guests here today. Okay, now... If you'll also take a look, you'll see that there is a, a Q&A button. Um, underneath the video window screen, you'll see that there is a Q&A link. This is a great place to go ahead and put any questions that you might have about uh, today's session. Uh, we'll do our best to address as many of those questions as we can. And if we're unable to answer those during today's webinar session, what I'll do is I'll come back to uh, this page here. You can always come back to this Crowdcast link, registration page and I'll uh, go ahead and answer that after today's webinar session. You'll also see next to that Q&A link that there is a button to a poll. You'll see that there is a number two. That means that there are two poll questions. If you can kindly answer that for me, it'll give me a very good understanding as to who's in this uh, training session here today. So if you take a look at that poll, question, you'll see that um, it's a great place to also see who is in this webinar uh, together. Uh, you'll see that there are quite a few professionals, entrepreneurs, small business owners. We have some um, K-12 individuals as well as individuals from the nonprofit space. So um, if you can answer that, that would be great. Um, it's also helpful for me to know how familiar you are with Easily and if you've used it before. Um, oftentimes you get a lot of new people to Easily and so this is very helpful for me. I'm taking a look and it looks like we have some people that have never used it before and some that have used it a little and would like to use it a little bit more. So hopefully we can walk you through some tips and suggestions as to how to best use Easily and then also we'll give you some more information about being able to go pro because that's really where uh, your maximum benefit of this tool is, is um, useful. Okay, wonderful. So I am going to go ahead and get started here. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my video. So goodbye. I'm going to go ahead and maximize my web browser so that you can uh, see that at its best. Okay, so uh, this is the Easily Designer, and I'm going to walk through this uh, shortly with you step by step so that you can become familiar with uh, using it and all of the tools that are available to uh, create your infographics. Um, but before I go ahead and walk you through that, I do want to just show you that there are uh, being able to create an infographic with Easily is very simple. Of course, uh, you, you will have the ability to browse and select templates that are available, which is a great way if you've never created an infographic before to get ideas as to how to create your infographic regardless of your purpose uh, to create an infographic. And uh, of course, we do have a design tool that allows you to drag and drop items 
into the design tool um, and, and large items along with other customization tools. From there, you are able to save and download your infographic, share it through social media, and in some cases, even um, present individual infographics from the designer if you're using it in the classroom as needed. So we'll walk you through these um, very easy steps, but I always like to know how many of you already have an idea as to what you're looking to create an infographic for. There are so many ways you can use an infographic, um, whether it is for social media, if it's in the classroom, whether you're asking your students to use it. Um, you know, if you can go ahead and um, put your ideas in the chat window as to uh, whether or not um, you have an idea of what you're looking to use uh, easily for or create an infographic, that would be great. And I know it always takes a little while, of course, to go ahead and get some responses. So I'll just wait for those. Okay, it looks like uh, some people are using it, looking to use, create infographics for social media and brochures. You know, I, you know, as I work for Easily here, I often get brochures from companies, and it's so interesting to see the different ways um, infographics are being used. You know, you. A lot of people think of infographics in the traditional sense of, you know, a one page type document with a title of information, but sometimes you'll see maybe just a little segment within some text that is using an infographic and that can be very helpful. Okay, people are looking to use it for education and training. Um, you know, as an e-learning specialist myself, I've certainly used infographics to create my training material when I'm working with uh, attendees. Okay, collaborative classroom presentations, school projects, marketing materials, making a history timeline. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for suggesting all of those ideas. And hopefully after today's session, you'll be able to get started on those. Uh, thank you so much. So let's go ahead and walk through the Easily Designer. Okay, so um, if you take a look uh, from the home page, you'll see that there is a login button at the very top. And you will need to create uh, a login in order to be able to use the Easily Designer and be able to save your information. Um, logging in is very simple. Um, you, if you have not created your account, you will certainly need to register. I have an account, so I'll go ahead and log in at this point. I also want to point out that um, the account that I'll be using, of course, is the Easily Pro uh, Designer. So uh, the experience of Easily will remain the same, of course, in the sense of being able to uh, browse through templates as well as drag and drop items. But you will uh, probably see that there are quite a few more objects and templates that I have available as a pro account user versus just the basic account. So please keep that in mind as we walk through the product. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and log in. Okay. And that will just take a second here. Um, but you'll see that this is a, the home page once I've logged in to Easily. And you'll see that uh, right at the very top, you'll see all of my visuals. Now, this is my library. These are the creations that I have and that I always have accessible um, to me as I create my infographics. Now, um, some of these infographics are, of course, ones that I have created. But um, as I stumble across infographics within the public visuals or even the templates, I often think to myself, wow, that would be a great infographic template to use in the future. So when I find one, what I do is I always save it here to my visuals uh, so that I don't have to locate it again. So that's another great way to be able to use your visuals um, in this way. Now, as you scroll down, you'll see that there are uh, quite a few public visuals. Our Easily community will often uh, make their visuals public and share them with the rest of the Easily community. And um, you'll be able to access those through the public visuals. Now, the very first set of templates will be the professionally designed templates that are provided through the uh, basic account. But then when you have a pro account, you'll also get some additional uh, templates that are professionally designed, such as resumes, process templates. Um, you'll also get some health 
themed templates, medical themed te templates that are available and real estate templates that you can use to start customizing your infographic. But as you continue and you scroll through all of the professionally designed templates, you'll eventually get to the templates that have been created by the Easily community. And uh, you'll you're able to use any of those existing uh, community infographics for your own purposes and uh, you will create that infographic and, and it will be safe you can save it to your account and that will not change the original infographic from that original designer okay now on the right hand side people often overlook this so I do want to go ahead and point this out you'll see that there is a way to search across all the infographics and also choose infographics by category now as you can see there are millions of visuals here and so you can go ahead and select a category that would maybe a best that would be best for the type of infographic that you're looking to do. So for example, if you're looking for a timeline type template, you can select timeline and that will resort all of the public visuals and give you some examples of some timeline templates that you can use. Now, of course, this will uh, bring up templates that are professionally designed as well as any that have been um, created by our Easily community. And you can scroll through those. Now. You can also start fresh. So if you go back to the home page, you can certainly go ahead and click on the start fresh button. So if you don't want to start off with a template, then you can go ahead, start fresh. You can clear the screen and remove all of the directions on how to go ahead and get started. And as you can see, you now have a blank canvas to work with. Okay, so now from here, you can still browse all of the templates that are available and uh, drag and drop a template if you decide that you do want to use one. And um, for individuals who are just starting out with infographics, you know, we highly recommend that you uh, use a template or at least take the time to browse some of the templates to get an idea as to how content is organized and how you can rearrange the content based on the type of information that you've created. Um, now, I went ahead and recently uh, created a short video on YouTube on the seven most common types of infographics. So you'll see that there are different types of infographics and how you can organize your content and depending on that you can go ahead and uh, select the type of template that you're looking to work with and since I'm on the topic of YouTube I do want to point out that we do have an easily YouTube channel and we'll be sending out a link to this channel uh, to everyone who is registered here today so you'll be able to browse all of our uh, YouTube tutorials and tips on how to create infographics as well as past webinars with some of our guest speakers. So um, this YouTube link, of course, will be passed out after today's session. But let's go ahead and also point out that uh, from here, you can go ahead and select templates by category. So I'm just selecting my drop down menu and I'm going to select health. And uh, again, this is part of the uh, pro account. So you'll see that there are uh, def certainly more templates to choose from. So now that I've selected health, you'll see that there are a variety of templates that I can select and work with. And like I said, uh, we recommend using templates if you're use, uh, creating an infographic for the very first time. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a template and drag it onto my canvas. So from here, I've selected a medical uh, themed infographic to work with. And I am just going to go ahead and start pointing out some of the things that you can do with the template and how you can remove, change, customize this, as well as uh, show you some of the other tools. Okay, so from here, I do want to point out that the text that is existing in the templates can be changed. So you can certainly go ahead and bold any of the text as needed. Uh, the italics, you can underline, you can add a shadow to the text as well. You can even position the text. Uh, you know, you can uh, go ahead and move it to the back uh, if you have any overlapping items, of course. You can certainly go ahead and do that. And 
you'll also be able to change the color of any of the text. So if you do need to change and adjust the color because you want to change the, the color theme on your template, that's perfectly fine. I'll go ahead and maybe change this to a bright blue just to show, make that stand out a little bit here. And you'll also be able to change alignments. So let's say you have a, a few sentences or a little bit of text and you need to align it to the left, center it, or to the right, you can certainly make those changes. Now, these are all standard features for text that you're familiar with in other tools. So all of those standard features on text are available. You'll also see that you can change the font. So with the basic account, you'll see that you'll have a few fonts to choose from. But when you do have a pro account, you will have a larger selection of fonts to choose from. And with the, the pro account, you also have the ability to upload uh, your own fonts. So if you have a special font for your company or if you um, have a font that you found online and you'd like to download and then re-upload that into Easily to use it into the, the infographic designer, then you certainly have the ability to do that. You can also change the size and you'll also see that you can hyperlink the text. So if you are looking to create an infographic um, that is a little bit more engaging and you want your users to interact with the infographic and get linked out um, to, let's say, a website, maybe your blog, uh, maybe, uh, you know, if you're a teacher, you might have a classroom website you want them to refer to, or if you want them to refer to specific um, online resources to complete an assignment after viewing an infographic, you know, you can go ahead and link that. The one thing that I suggest is that if you are making something that's inter interactive with your infographic is that you want to um, make sure that your audience knows that you can click on the items. Because uh, sometimes people don't think that you, know, you can link and click through an infographic. So you may want to provide some type of indication that you can go ahead and do that. Now you also want to keep in mind that depending on how you're sharing your infographic, and I'll go into the sharing features a little bit later, uh, that uh, so the way that you share your infographic, the hyperlink may not work. So for example, uh, something like uh, an infographic that is embedded within a website, uh, you will be able to interact with the infographic in that way. Uh, and uh, maybe even a PDF document. So PDF document, the hyperlinks will work. So if you download it in a PDF format, then you can go ahead and link in that way. But if you are downloading a static image, JPEG, um, PNG file, you know, those are static images. And it's just the way that the file, of course, is made that you will not be able to interact and click on any of the hyperlinks within your infographic. So keep that in mind in terms of how you'll be sharing it and whether or not the hyperlink makes sense. Now we're talking about hyperlinking with the text here. I do want to point out that you can hyperlink objects um, as well. So if you wanted to um, go ahead and just go ahead and refresh my page here. Um, I'm going, oh, you know what? Let's see if that will save. Okay, there we go. It just looks like my items are sticking here a little bit. So give me just a little bit of time here. Okay, so uh, if I select an object, so let's say I've selected this uh, surgeon image here and I would like to hyperlink it, uh, you'll see that I can go ahead and hyperlink the object. And so you'll see that once I select that hyperlink, then I can go ahead and put a link to a website or a classroom website, whatever you want your user to link out to. Okay. Okay, I also want to point out that um, adding objects is very simple. So you have quite a few objects here within your infographic, but let's say you wanted to add additional objects. So if I go ahead and click on the objects button, you'll be able to search across all of the objects that are available. Now, if you've never used 
um, easily before and you want to get familiar with the images that are available, um, I suggest browsing through all of the categories. And I will go ahead and just uh, select um, something like food as an example. And uh, when I select food, you'll see that there is uh, 54 uh, pages worth of food items to choose from. And as I continue to scroll um, through these objects, you'll see that there are different types and styles, of course, of images. And you'll want to make sure that you're selecting objects, of course, that work well together as you create uh, your infographic. Um, but um, as I continue to scroll through here, you'll see that there are a variety of different objects to choose from. And let me just, and I know that this doesn't exactly go with the theme of my infographic, but what I want to do is just show you the drag and drop features of Easily. Okay, so as you can see, I've um, dropped down a few fruits and, you know, you can certainly go ahead and make adjustments to these. Okay, now if you want, you already know what you're looking for and you don't necessarily want to browse through everything because that can sometimes take a, a little while, I'm going to go ahead and enter something like the word heart. And let's say I'm looking to find a different object of a heart to add to my infographic. So you'll see that there are a variety of different objects I can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and maybe select this one and drag and drop it. So if, if you know what you're looking for, I highly suggest using the search box and just entering your term. And if you're having a hard time finding an object with your pro account, then you know think of other words uh, that uh, could, could be used, of course, and kind of expand your vocabulary when you're trying to um, find an object, as that can sometimes pull up some additional objects that you can use. Okay, so to enlarge an object, you can certainly go ahead and just take the corners of your object and you can shrink things down and you can enlarge. And of course, you can go ahead and spin your object. You'll see that there's a little handle at the very top of your object that does allow you to spin those items. Now, um, just a, a little trick here with uh, objects. Sometimes um, you just want to go ahead and clone an object and you don't necessarily want to go ahead and keep finding an object to put, drag and drop it. You do have a cloning tool in your gray and white banner, so you can certainly go ahead and, and clone those very easily. Um, also, I do want to point out that you can go ahead and group objects together. So, you know, if I wanted to move objects around and sometimes you get them perfectly only to have to move them all over again. Um, the easiest thing to do is to go ahead and take your cursor and drag them over the items that you want to move around. This will group all of your items together. So I've gone ahead and, um, oh, let me do that again. I'll group all of these items and you can see now I've grouped all of my fruit together. And so I can move these all across the page all at once. And once I release them and I click on my page again, you know, you can certainly move them over again or you can lock these into position once you have them grouped by simply uh, clicking on um, the group feature. So that is a great tool there and saves a lot of time when you're designing your infographic. Okay, so I have a question here that I'm quickly seeing in terms of how to, um, you know, place items be behind text or, you know, if you're looking to rearrange them um, in order. So here, let's take a look at this um, heart right here. So I've clicked on the object and I can go ahead and move this to the back. So if I take a look at this gray and white banner, you'll see that there is this um, button here. And this will send your item to the back. Now, um, keep in mind that once you send it to the back, um, it's hard to go ahead and, and select that item again. So um, it's not impossible, of course. You could just you just have to um, work with your items that you have on the page. So if you wanted to uh, work with this heart again, then everything that was sent to the back 
the back image needs to be sent to the back again. And so now I can work with my heart and move it around. But you know, these are the positioning tools here that do allow you to move them from front to back. So let's say you wanted to enlarge this. And even if you wanted to change the opacity of this image to make it a little see-through, you can certainly do that as well. And then move it to the back, you can do that as well. Then you can see the objects on top of an object that you've changed the opacity on. Okay, so I'm seeing a few questions and I'm catching some of them. So um, how about I go ahead and check in with the group here because I've been talking quite a bit and I do have a few more tools that I uh, do want to address, but I'm looking to see if there's any good questions that I can address that maybe I've missed. Okay. Okay, I don't think I've, I've, I think I've addressed most of the questions here. Okay, in regards to the Easily Designer. So, all right, let me go ahead and um, keep going. And I think Latasha is handling um, a good majority of the questions. So we'll keep moving along. Okay. I've added a lot of content here to my infographic. So let me go ahead and just delete an item. I'm just selecting some of them and deleting. And let's go into the media tool. Now the media tool is a great way to be able to add um, stock photos, YouTube videos, and even upload any of your own image files. So stock photos are great. With the basic account, you'll have a few stock photos to choose from that you can add. But when you do have a pro account, you do gain access to thousands of images that are already paid for royalty free through your subscription through too easily. So if you are looking to use stock photos in your infographics or you have a need for that, I highly um, uh, recommend that you consider taking a look at the pro version because you will get quite a few more images to choose from. I'm just going to do a, a simple search here for a laptop and again I have a pro account so I do have quite a few images here to work with. I'm going to go ahead and select this image of a laptop and you'll see that I have an image that is brought onto my page and I'm going to go ahead and enlarge this image. Now, of course, you can change the size of this image as needed, and I'm just gonna go ahead and enlarge this here. Now, uh, once you have your image on your page, you can work with the available tools in the gray and white banner. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and change the opacity um, to this laptop. There you go, it's a little bit more see-through there. And I'm gonna send it to the back, okay? And so as you can see, I have a laptop that is now in the back of my infographic. Um, you know, some people choose to use the uh, images as is and organize them. Um, you know, in, in quadrants on the infographic, however you choose to use it. Um, but I do want to show that, you know, you can change the opacity. You can use these stock images as your background image for your infographic or whatever type of image that you're looking to create. I often use stock images um, from Easily to create my banner images for my webinars as needed or as um, thumbnail images for my YouTube videos. So, uh, you know, there's quite a few different ways to be able to use this. Okay, now let's go back into that media button. Those are the stock photos. You also have the ability to go ahead and add a YouTube video to your infographic, which is another great way to make this um, infographic inter interactive for your audience. Now, what you'll need is simply the YouTube URL um, to embed into your infographic. So I'm going to quickly go out um, to YouTube here and I'm going to find a video and I am going to locate the URL that I need for this video and I'm going to copy and I'm going to move back to easily and I'm going to paste and I'm going to hit select 
Now this may take a little bit of time, but as you can see, I've now embedded a YouTube video. I can, just like an image in Easily, I can go ahead and enlarge my video as needed. And I know that my <laughs> infographic that I'm creating here isn't exactly organized and designed very well, but I'm just trying to walk you through all of the features so that you're familiar with it. Now, keep in mind that as you embed a YouTube video, you want to remember how you're going to be sharing your infographic. Because if you are going to be simply downloading a static image, JPEG, PNG file, then the video is not going to work in that way. Um, if you're going to download a, a PDF of your infographic, again, the YouTube video is not going to work. However, if you are embedding an infographic into your website, your blog, your classroom website, uh, maybe you're, if you're a professor or a teacher and have a learning management system and you can embed content and you're looking to embed your infographics, then the YouTube video will certainly work in that way. So if you are looking to share your content with the YouTube video, let me walk you through how you can um, do that. So. At the very top, on the black and white banner, you'll see that there is a share button. This share button will allow you to be able to share your infographic in many different ways. And since I'm talking about the YouTube video, I do want to show how you can share the content uh, if, if you are embedding a YouTube video in your infographic. So the best way, of course, is uh, by certainly grabbing the embed code. And the embed code will allow you to copy and paste the code that you'll need to embed into your website or into a, a blog post or your classroom website, copy, paste, embed, and you'll be able to uh, do that. If you are using a different code system, there are certainly some other um, tools uh, on the web that you can use to go ahead and convert that into a different code system, but this is uh, the um, most popular code that, that we have there based off of the needs of most users. Okay, another way is to view your infographic in a browser and then get that browser link. So if you click on this view in browser button, um, this is going to open up a window and oh, it looks like Crowdcast is uh, maybe blocking my pop-up window or maybe my browser is blocking that. So, um, but what you'll do is you'll get a window and it will provide you with that browser URL. And that browser URL, you'll be able to grab and share that browser URL through social media. And in that way, when uh, people are taking a look at the browser version of your infographic, then it will allow you to go ahead and watch that YouTube video as well. So think about how you're looking to share your infographic and if adding a YouTube video makes sense. Okay, so uh, that is how you can add um, a YouTube video. And I know that I'm kind of running short on time here, um, but uh, for some of you who are thinking about adding YouTube videos, um, how do you think that that would be helpful for you? Go ahead and um, place that in the comments section or in the chat window as, you know, it's always good to learn from others and maybe get an idea as to how you think it will be useful because we can all learn from each other. Okay, great. So as um, some of you start to maybe add some of those uh, questions, I am going to go ahead and keep moving along here since I do want to make sure I have enough time for everything. Okay, I'm going to spend maybe about five more minutes showing a few more features. And then what I'll do is uh, I will address some questions about being able to go pro, um, discounts for our nonprofit organizations, and make sure that I have enough time for that as well. Because as I know that some people start to drop off at about uh, 30, 40 minutes uh, for a webinar. So let me, let me go ahead and walk through a few more things. Okay. So if you have any raw data that you're looking to go ahead and add to your infographic, you can go ahead and add uh, data charts. 
Now with the basic account, of course, you will have um, some limited charts that are available. But if you are, uh, if you are a pro user, if you click on this charts button, you'll see that there are a variety of different charts to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and select the pie, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag this onto my infographic here. Now, once you drag this onto your infographic, you will need to double click on the chart, pie graph, and you'll see that there is a button here to import data. So if you are looking to import your data, you could go ahead and import it either using an Excel spreadsheet or if you have a um, Google Sheet that you're working with, a uh, CSV file, you can go ahead and import that data in that way. Now, once you start to uh, work with your data or if you're just looking to input your data, um, manually you can certainly do that as well you can add rows um, you can remove a row as needed you can change the colors of all of your uh, um, segments and I also want to point out that with all of the color features across whether it's text or the graph or the objects because cer certain objects you can change the colors of you can go ahead and select more and of course, you can certainly add your color codes and apply those as needed. So if you have specific colors that you're working with for a website, your own website, your blog, and you want to make sure you stay consistent with those colors, then you can go ahead and enter those codes and apply that. But you do have some of those standard colors there. You can also uh, relabel all of the text on your infographic, change the values, um, and then, you know, change the font size, of course. You know, we have dollar system, uh, dollar signs uh, for the U.S. dollar, the euro percentage. So you'll have a variety of options there. Okay, I'm going to simply uh, close this, but hopefully this gives you an idea as to how you can customize the data, customize the colors, customize the text, and then you'll want to, of course, certainly save your changes, and um, once you go ahead and save your changes, you'll see that that is uh, changed on your uh, chart here. I didn't add anything because I'm running out of time, but certainly play around with that, and you'll see that your, uh, your chart can be enlarged or you can shrink it down as needed. Okay, so those are the charts. Um, you can also upload your own images and I showed that earlier under the media tab by being able to upload your files. You can do it in the media tab or simply by uh, clicking on this upload and you can certainly go ahead and add your files. Um, you'll see that there are a variety of files that you can work with. So if you have your own logo that you want to add to your infographic, if you have um, some other stock photos that you've saved that you'd like to incorporate into your infographic, you can upload those. If you have a mascot for your school or uh, your school's logo, you can add that in very, very easily. Okay, so um, I also want to just show here some of the download uh, features in terms of saving your infographic. Now, when you save your infographic, the one thing I do want to point out is that we will periodically save your infographic uh, to your visuals, but we highly recommend that you take the time to save your infographic every so often. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to name this as my practice infographic and I'm going to save that. So now it's at least saved to my visuals and of course it is saved periodically, but uh, we do recommend that you do that to, in order to save your most recent changes. Now, in order to download, you do need to take the time to save it, but um, with the basic account, you'll see that you can download a low quality uh, JPEG image, um, but if you do have a pro account, you will have the ability to download your infographic as a high quality um, PNG image, as well as be able to uh, download a PDF version of your infographic. So um, you'll have a few more options, of course, with the pro account. For those of you that are working with very sensitive information and you don't want to save or, um, your content into the visuals here um, for easily, I do want to point out that you can export your work and it will 
you will be given a specific file type that is used for easily and then when you come back into easily then you'll be able to go ahead and uh, open that work and continue working on it as needed so uh, just keep that in mind if you are uh, using uh, maybe more sensitive information that you don't necessarily want to save on um, the Easily servers for whatever reason. Okay, now we spoke a little bit about sharing um, the infographic either through embedding it onto a website or getting that shareable link but I do want to point out that there are a few other ways you can go ahead and uh, simply share by email and it will share a link to the infographic to whoever you want to share it with and you can also invite a friend to edit um, your infographic so if you're looking to work collaboratively then you can certainly go ahead and invite a friend uh, to edit the infographic as well well so a few different ways to work with that okay there's also the option for group share um, I'm not going to speak to this a whole lot but we do have a wonderful YouTube video that does explain the group sharing feature this is great for classrooms or people working on group projects maybe you want to work collaboratively on one infographic or maybe if you're a teacher and you have a classroom that you'd like to manage and you'd like to see all of the visuals that are being created at the classroom level then you'll be able to create a group and then also create accounts for your students to be able to use the easily account without having to use uh, you know their uh, email accounts you can actually create accounts uh, through this group sharing feature so if you have any questions about that reach out to us we're happy to help but um, there is a great uh, YouTube video that you can also watch and um, we're happy to work through that with you okay so let's take a look here and I think I've got through most of the tips and tools that I wanted to cover here for easily um, I know that may, there might be just a few more things out there but I hope that um, this walkthrough and demo was just enough to get you started and I hope that we pointed out a few things that will make using easily a little bit easier what I'd like to do at this point in time because I know we always get questions about some of the best practices about creating infographics and I spoke to some of these a little bit but here are six best practices for infographic design when you're creating your infographic uh, certainly you want to limit your color palette so you know you may want to keep it to maybe two or three colors that work well together and when it comes to your font um, as well as the objects that you're using and uh, be consistent with your style choices I think it's very important to uh, use uh, the same type of style with your objects and images throughout um, in order to make things look very very professional um, and also keep your images uh, very simple uh, sometimes if you have too many objects uh, and it gets very cluttered it kind of gets hard to to uh, view your infographic and understand where you need to go in terms of uh, reading and exploring the content within your infographic which leads to uh, the idea that white space is actually a good thing so I know people have a tendency to want to use every last bit of space on their canvas to create their infographic but white space is actually a good thing and you know there's something to be said about a minimalist design when it comes to infographics so you know think think about that when you're creating infographics also two fonts is more than enough for your infographic you know you may want to use a bold font um, with a uh, skinny font or uh, you know maybe use a handwritten font with a, a text-based font or typewritten font so think about what you're looking what your design is about and your audience and what will work best for them but you know usually two fonts is more than enough and also size matters when it comes to your infographic um, I know that you can create infographics in all different uh, sizes that you can share but uh, when you're looking to create an infographic you want to make sure that your reader is interested in getting through the content and all the way to the very end and you know a page size is usually a good size to keep in mind and keep your content to about a page sometimes um, you know if you get a very very long infographic you may lose interest you know halfway or almost get to the end but not very get get to the very end where there's a call to action maybe and you're really missing out so you know really think about 
the most important information that you're looking to add to your infographic and stick to that. And um, the question that I always ask myself, whether I'm creating an infographic or even creating a, a training session, is what does my audience need to know and what is nice to know. And oftentimes you can leave out the nice to know information and only stick to the need to know information. And hopefully that's enough to keep your infographic concise. Okay. So those are some best practices. You'll see that there is a 14-day uh, trial. There's a green button in the window below this uh, video screen. If you take a look at the video screen, there's a green button Click on that, it will take you to a link that will allow you to get a free 14-day trial. It will allow you to explore all of the templates that are available and all of those objects and images that you can drag and drop onto your infographic, as well as allow you to explore all of the stock images that are also available. You'll also get uh, uh, quite a few more fonts, as well as help from our design team uh, through our support. And um, of course, all of your work is, is kept private. So let's go ahead and uh, keep moving along to the pricing for those who are interested um, beyond that trial, of course. The Easily um, Pro um, for a business user or an individual user is going to be $36 a year, which is uh, very, very affordable considering you're getting all of those objects and images and stock images and templates to work with. And of course, that is unlimited user use um, for that account. Um, if you are an organization that might need a specific uh, quote, maybe for multiple users for your organization, then certainly contact us and, you know, we can work with you. You can reach out to me at Dyna at Easley, or you can contact us at support at Easley as well. Now, if you're a nonprofit organization or if you're a teacher, teacher with um, a class full of students that you'd like them to have access to the pro account, then we do have discounts for you. Uh, Nonprofit and teachers get a 50% discount. It's only $18 a year per user. So again, you'll get access to all of those features and tools, images, objects, fonts, uh, templates, <laughs> stock images that really make the uh, pro account worthwhile and very, very easy to create infographics. And for teachers who are looking to use easily with their class, if you pay the full uh, subscription price of $36, a year, you will be able to gain access to 30 student pro accounts and they'll have access to all of the pro features as well. And um, because I know that you're maybe looking to use it for a few projects a year and you know, you do want them to be able to maximize on all the tools available to really um, create uh, amazing infographics based off of any content that you're teaching in the classroom. Okay, so those are the pricing. And again, you know, follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google Plus, you can email us. We also have an Easily blog that you can uh, access. We are always providing uh, wonderful tips on how to use Easily and give you some additional ideas. Again, here is our support information as well as my direct contact information. If you do need to reach out to me directly, I'm happy, happy to help. Um, I am going to be sending out a link to the YouTube video so that you have access to our Easily channel or simply do a search for Easily on YouTube and you'll be able to gain access to all of our videos as well as recordings of some of our webinars with our guest speakers who have a very insightful information to share. And I will also be sending a link to our free eBooks. Um, so uh, we do have an eBook for infographics for your classroom. Uh, here is is a link to that ebook uh, just to give you a quick look and give you um, some guidance in using infographics in the classroom. And we also have a 13-page uh, book, Crash Course in Infographics, which will also give you a, a very nice walkthrough of infographic basics in order to be able to uh, get you started on creating infographics beyond just the basic how-tos of using easily. And so hopefully those are some wonderful tips that you can start to use and uh, get started with using easily and creating infographics for your own purposes. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm going to go back to... my homepage here, and I'm going to see if there are any questions. 
that I can address. And I know that some of you are going to stop hopping off, start hopping off. So let me go ahead and say thank you to those who are hopping off today's session. I really appreciate the time that you've taken to join us here today. I hope that you found it valuable. And I hope that Latasha was able to answer um, as many of the questions through the chat window as possible. And I'm going to just quickly see if there are any Q&A questions that, that came up that we can address here. Okay. All right. So here's a question um, from Apple Lee. Any, any advice on what um, should one put into an infographic and what one shouldn't? Okay, so that's a really good question, and I know it will vary depending on the type of content that you're looking to incorporate into your infographic and the message that you're looking to communicate to your audience. Um, but uh, you really want to think about what is the most important content that you need to share with your audience? Now, there are some topics out there that, um, you know, has a lot of information. And one thing is that you may want to or may need to uh, narrow your topic down in order to be able to manage and add that content onto your infographic. So that is maybe um, step number one. You know, if it's a really broad topic, try to narrow it down as best as you can. Now, if you've already narrowed it down and you still have a lot of information to share, then um, you may want to make sure that you, when you're organizing your infographic that you can maybe um, section pieces off on your infographic uh, from top to bottom so that people know that maybe you're moving from one thing to another thing and that allows people to kind of break up your infographic based off of the different uh, types of information that you're looking to share. Uh, another thing that we suggest is maybe creating multiple infographics and then uh, releasing those separately as needed uh, to your audience. So let's say if you're a blog writer, um, then you know you may want to break down a topic into a series and maybe release an infographic each day or each week, however you want to manage that. But if a topic is that large, then you may need to create um, quite a few. And then lastly, um, you know, again, like I said before, think about what your audience absolutely needs to know and make sure that your infographic at least contains that. Take a look at your infographic and then if you still have room and there's still space or if there's something that doesn't quite make sense and you do need to add some more context to your infographic, then take a look at what's nice to know about your topic and see if you can incorporate that in any way. Okay, so that was a little bit of a long answer, but I hope that that helps a little bit. Okay, how can we use easily in teaching um, foreign language? Um, that is a, a really good question. So um, there's different um, examples out there of infographics where um, people have taken a language um, or grammar um, tips. And of course, they're, they've narrowed down that topic. So each infographic is based on a specific topic um, when they're either teaching grammar or a foreign language. And of course, because you can add the text to your infographic, then you can add that text throughout. And then um, also think about how you can incorporate the objects that represent the um, vocabulary terms grammar um, into that infographic, drag and drop that, so that you can pair that up with uh, the vocabulary that you're using. And of course, um, if you're teaching foreign language, then <laughs> I'm sure that you're very familiar with those languages and you'll be able to um, type in that uh, vocabulary very easily, of course, into your infographic. Now, um, in terms of the infographic and actually using it, of course, you can use it, um, you know, in the classroom. You can use it on your website if you're covering a topic. Maybe if you are a foreign language teacher and you have a classroom full of students, have them select the topic and maybe create a infographic themselves because as they're creating that infographic, they're also learning that language. Um, so they're learning by actually doing and creating some type of a document document that can be used as a teaching tool. So that could be an idea as well. Okay, so what is the best way to remove unneeded items from templates? Um, so that's a good question, and I hope maybe you saw a little bit of that when we were walking through it, but just go ahead and click on any of the objects within a template and delete them. 
So uh, once you see an item, then you can just go ahead and click on it and then you can uh, press the delete button or you can uh, press the trash button in the gray and white banner at the top once you've selected that item and then that will go ahead and remove those items. So you can certainly go ahead and do that. One thing that I suggest too, because let's say you remove an item and then you want to be able to bring that item back. Um, I like to sometimes move objects to the side of my infographic and off my canvas. And so I just click on the item and I drag it to the side because I may be interested in using it later and I don't want to lose that particular item. So uh, what I'll do is I'll move the objects to the side, start um, creating and designing, and then once I've decided that I absolutely do not need that object, then what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and delete it at that point in time. So I hope that that is a helpful uh, tip there um, for you. Okay. Okay, great. Wonderful. Okay. So I think that those are all of the questions. I just quickly skimmed through all of those. So thank you. Thank you so much for all of those questions. I appreciate it. It's um, so much more engaging when I actually see that you have questions about what we're covering. So I appreciate that communication. And um, Latasha, um, how are we doing on questions in the comments section? It looks like you're pretty much on top of them like you always are. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Latasha. I appreciate that. Okay. And oh, it looks like another question comes came up. Are all the templates available as static templates? If I'm understanding that correctly? Yes, all everything um, within um, easily is going to be static. So the templates that will be static, of course. Okay. All right, well, we are at top of the hour, so I'm gonna close this out, and I know that um, we've had quite a few people drop off, but quite a few people also hanging on to get some of their questions answered. So thank you, everyone, again, especially to those that are up in the middle of the night who are learning about Easily. I think I saw a few people say that they were uh, joining in the early morning. Uh, question. Um, I'm going to stick around for just another few minutes, see if any other questions pop up, but um, I'm going to go ahead and close out the audio, and I want to thank you again for joining, and have a wonderful day.